Hey guys, something new for the channel. <laughs> I've never worked on an outboard before. This is a 1977 Evinrude 35 horsepower two-cylinder two-stroke engine. It's a beast. And uh, I've just gotten everything sorted out. I had to do the ignition timing all manually. The way they set it up in the manual didn't work in this case because this part is not for the machine, but it is necessary and I had to buy that separately. It's for a manual start, not an electric start. So I had to get the timing light out and go through all of that. Carby had to come off, had to do a deep clean in there. Reeds, reed plate, had to all come off, had to get rid of all the rust, had to get rid of the gaskets, had to reface everything, had to then put, make new gaskets. Um, where are we? Fuel pump, I haven't sorted yet. I actually have an external line, which is gonna be filled up with a bottle. Um, Coils are both testing good. Compression is 80 on one cylinder, the bottom one, 90 on the top. Um, what else have we done? I've taken the leg off. I've cleaned the water pump. There was an issue with that. I have uh, given it new gear oil. Oh, and I set the, uh, what do you call this? <laughs> the position of the throttle relative to the timing advance. If you, uh, if I increase the throttle, see I had to learn all this. You see it's uh, like that. Um, you have to set that part, and then you also have to set the position of the throttle at full throttle. I had to do all that as well. Um, and this was all things that I had to learn. I didn't know any of this. So I spent the last couple of weeks, I've got the service manual, I've gone through the whole thing, I've worked all the wiring out, how it all goes together. It's uh, missing a lot of parts. It should have an electric starter on here. It doesn't, didn't come with it. It should have a rectifier and uh, it doesn't have a rectifier either. It should have a choke solenoid. Uh, where are we? Come on. There. That's your, your choke solenoid, and that's not working either. Uh, I just do that manually. I can adjust that. That's not an issue. Um, so yes, lots of things are missing, but an engine really just needs a few things to run. It needs fuel, and it needs it in the correct ratio. It needs spark, it needs it in the correct timing. It needs compression. You also need to make sure that the valves are timed correctly. Now with a two stroke, they're ports, but still really important if, uh, in this case, it's a reed valve. If the reeds aren't closing, then they won't run. And if you're working with a piston port engine, if the, the piston is worn and it's not sealing the ports, you won't get that either. So it's not just compression, fuel and spark. It needs, a, it needs more than that, but that's the basics of what it needs. Anyway, I thought we're going to do this together. I need to fill this tube up with some fuel. We need to fill up the carby and uh, we're going to pull it over and over and over until, uh, until we get it to run. I might even squirt some fuel in there, but uh, let's go get set up and I think I'll put you next to the fire extinguisher.
Looking at the telltale, it doesn't seem to be, where is it here, giving out any water. Now, I would have thought the telltale would be giving water constantly. I do know that there is a thermostat in here, it's actually in there, which won't open until the cylinder head gets to a certain temperature. However, I would have thought that we should still be seeing a squirt of water coming out of here. We are seeing water come out of here and here which is the exhaust ports. And I'm also seeing water coming out back here and here. I'm gonna to have to do some research. Um, I do know that the water pump is not in the best of shapes by any means, but um, hey, look, it starts, it runs. And uh, that's the most important thing. I am struggling to get it to run without um, giving it a bit of fuel down the spark plug holes. I don't know whether it's because I've got this machine tilted back and uh, a little squirt down the carby isn't really helping it. Also, this, as I said earlier, it should have a uh, solenoid on here that controls the choke. And it's really hard to hold that closed and pull the engine over, not get hit in the arm. Yeah, I got hit in the arm a couple of times, pretty good. So uh, that's not going to help the situation at all. Situation? Situation. But um, the fact that it starts, it runs, it holds a good idle, mostly. Uh, you can't really tell how an engine's running until it's under load, full throttle, and it's kind of tearing up but we can't do that here of course as you saw i got splashed <laughs> i was looking down here and i was thinking why is this kicking out a whole bunch of water when the prop shouldn't be moving because we're in neutral <laughs> I was like, i'll just put it in gear maybe it's not slightly maybe it's slightly in gear i'll try and take it out anyway <laughs> and it just kicked up a whole heap of water of course the majority of the fuel uh, of the exhaust gas comes through the propeller so that was why that was what was there that was what was going on but uh there we go bit of fun i wanted to bring you along for the first start and uh i thought yeah it it, it runs pretty good it could run better but uh, the fact that it runs at all is a success in my book so uh there we go hope you enjoyed it uh, maybe we will uh, see this back on the channel i am going to sort out the fuel pump I'm going to try and get an external tank, make sure the fuel pump's working, and that way I don't have to worry about this tube. And also the consistent pressure going into the float bowl, and or the, the, the consistent fuel level and fuel pressure going into the float bowl will also make it run much, much nicer as well. So a few things to still address, still tackle, but uh, nonetheless, good fun. It starts, it runs, and uh, I'm pretty happy at that.